Moving on from the fund fine, let's get a little bit more serious. Um, this was a two, or excuse me, about a three or four page paper that was written by astrophysicist David Spurgel. It, it looks like uh, it was not distributed publicly at quick glance, although some of you uh, internet sleuths out there, again, may be able to find this somewhere. I, at quick glance, I did not see it. So I believe that this was an internal or at least something that was uh, distributed a little bit more privately uh, by this astrophysicist on his thoughts on UFOs. Now, it's not every day that you see somebody of his credentials talking about UFOs and mentioning aliens, which I'll get into in a, in a minute. Um, his quick CV, and I can't go over it in, in, in its entirety, it's very impressive, but he's the president of what's called the Simons Foundation. He's the co-chair of the Widefield Infrared Survey Telescopes uh, Science Team. Uh, he's a Charles Young Professor of Astronomy uh, Emeritus on the Class of 1897 Foundation at Princeton University, and it goes on and on. His background is incredible. Uh, I'm I'm going to be reaching out to to um, uh, to to David Spurgel, seeing maybe if he might be interested in coming on this channel and talking about this paper since it's now public uh, and out in the open through the, the the Freedom of Information Act. And I'll I'll read a little bit uh, about it. Again, it's it's quite a few pages long, so I'm not going to read everything. Uh, but again, the title "Thoughts on UFOs," written by David Spurgel, distributed internally by NASA. Uh, he talks about what are they, meaning what are UFOs? And he says, quote, the most conservative hypothesis is that these UFOs are built by humans, experimental vehicles under development by the U.S. military or by foreign militaries. In the past, famous UFO sites, e.g. Area 51, have turned out to be test sites for advanced technologies. Some of the triangular shaped objects that are capable of rapid accelerations and high speeds do seem remarkably similar to descriptions of hypersonic vehicles that are currently under development by the Army, Navy, Air Force, DARPA, and the NSA. The Indian, Chinese, and Russian military are all developing their own hypersonic vehicles. DARPA HTV-2 had test flights over a decade ago, so that the recent appearance of flying triangular-shaped objects that can reach high speeds seems consistent with this hypothe hypothesis. There is also extensive work on developing drone swarms, by many nations, including even Armenia, whose properties match some UFO reports. He then goes into uh, another explanation, which is natural phenomena. He talks about ball lightning, or what he calls St. Elmo fire. Uh, moving ahead on the paper, this is where he talks about the most interesting, and this is actually how he terms it, the most exciting hypothesis is that some of the UFOs are extraterrestrials visiting the Earth and studying the planet in its life forms. Aliens capable of interstellar space travel are not likely to be using technologies that are familiar to us, e.g. solar sails or hypersonic air-breathing vehicles. They would only be detectable if they wished to be seen. For example, they would likely want to miniaturize their probes and not likely to have familiar-looking vehicles. Given astronomical timescales, Alien life is likely either a billion years less advanced than human life or a billion years more advanced technologically. As Clark's third law states, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguish indistinguishable from magic. So he talks about the alien hypothesis, again, not something that you see every day in connection to UAPs or UFOs from astrophysicists, astronomers, astrobiologists. Generally, they stick with life way out there, not down here. So for them to uh, start talking about that uh, in these types of internal papers, very encouraging. Uh, it, was, it was very interesting for me to see. Again, I won't read everything to you, but in his paper, he also talks about the observables and uh, essentially asking the questions where you know, where they come from, what are the, what, what is their duration, the amplitude, uh, the acceleration, the velocities, how frequently are the events, so on and so forth. And he talks about that scientific approach on how to look at the UAP issue and try and solve it. So a very interesting paper. I would, I would uh, for those interested, download it and read it in its entirety.